to register an oath that I shall never have my hair cut again. I was particularly emphatic in my instructions to the hairdresser only to cut the ends off. Oh, he must have thought I meant the other ends. Oh, well, never mind. I shan't meet anybody to care about so early. Oh, uh, eight o'clock, I declare I haven't a moment to lose. You see, fate has placed me at the hands of a most punctual, particular, and peremptory of hatters, and I must fulfill my destiny. Oh. Open locks, whoever knocks. Good morning, Colonel Cox. I hope you slept comfortably, Colonel. Well, I can't say I did, Bouncer. I should feel obliged to you if you could accommodate me with a more protuberant bolster. B, uh, the one I have now seems to me to have about a handful and a half of feathers at either end, and nothing whatsoever in the middle. Anything to accommodate you, Colonel Cox? Why? I do declare, you've had your hair cut. Cut? It strikes me. I've had it mowed. It's kind of you to mention it, Bouncer, but I'm perfectly conscious of the absurdity of my personal appearance already. It looks as if I've been cropped for the militia. The militia? I recollect when I was in the militia. Now he's off on his hobby. Yes, we were mounted on charges. I recollect upon one occasion being seated firmly in the saddle for over eight hours. And I don't recollect being able to sit down again for a considerable period afterwards. Yes, yes, in those merry days. Yes, yes, in those brilliant days. We gathered our laurels and rode on our base. We gathered our laurels and rode on our base. Mounted a horse in Her Majesty's force As one of the yeomen to meet with the foreman For then an invasion Threatened the nation Then every man 
man in the rear of the van found an occasion and every man in the rear of the van found an occasion to sing Rather plan, rather plan, rather plan, rather plan, rather plan, 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 rather plan, 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 rather plan, rather plan. Sounded the trumpet, we beat the drum. Somehow the enemy, somehow the enemy, somehow the enemy didn't come. So I gave up my horse in Her Majesty's force, as I wasn't the foeman to cope with the yeoman, and so no invasion. Threatened the nation. There wasn't a man in the rear of the fan who found an occasion. There wasn't a man in the rear of the fan found an occasion to sing. Rather plan, rather plan, rather plan, rather plan, rather plan, 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 plan. Rather plan, plan, plan. <laughs> rather plan, rather plan. Well, this is pleasant. This comes of having one's hair cut. None of my hats will fit me. Oh. oh, well, never mind. This one seems to wobble about rather less than the others. Oh, well, now I'm off. Oh, oh. Hey. Uh, by the by, Bounds, I wish to know how it is that I frequently find my apartment full of smoke. Why, um, I suppose the chimney. The chimney? The chimney doesn't smoke tobacco, Bouncer. I'm speaking of tobacco smoke. I suppose you're not guilty of cheroots or cubas? Not I indeed, Colonel. Nor partial to a pipe? No, sir. Oh, well, then how is this? Why, um, the gentleman from the attic, I suppose. He's hardly ever without a pipe in his mouth. And there he sits for hours with his feet upon the mantelpiece. On the mantelpiece? On the mantel... About Pencer, I find that to be a considerable stretch, either of your imagination or of this gentleman's legs. I presume you mean the fender or the hob. Sometimes one, sometimes the other. And there he sits for hours and puffs away into the fireplace. And then you mean to say that this gentleman's smoke, rather than emulating the example of all other sorts of smoke and going up the chimney, thinks proper to affect a singularity by taking a contrary direction? Well... I suppose the gentleman you're speaking of is the individual I invariably encounter going up the stairs when I'm coming down and going down the stairs when I'm coming up. Why, well, yes, I... For the appearance of his outward man, I should unhesitatingly set him down as a gentleman associated with the printing interest. Ugh. Well, yes. And a very respectable gentleman he is, sir. <laughs> You'll be back at your usual time, I suppose, Colonel. Uh, yes, at nine o'clock, Bouncer. And you need to light my fire in the future, B. I'll do it myself. Oh, and don't forget the bolster, B, please, the bolster. And, um, oh, a halfpenny's worth of milk, too, Bouncer. Be good enough to let it stand, would you? I wish the cream to accumulate. Right away, sir. Oh. Stay, Bouncer, stay. To me it has occurred that now's the time with you to have a word. What can he mean? I tremble, oh, I tremble. Listen. With pleasure. Yes, I must dissemble. That 
Plan, 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 plan,
I'm a military man. 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 I'm a I was all in fear of Mr. Box should come in before Mr. Cox went out. Luckily, they've never met yet. And what's more, they're not very likely to do so. For Mr. Box is hard at work at the newspaper office all night and doesn't come home till morning. And Mr. Cox is busy making hats all day long and doesn't come home till night. So that I get a double rent for my room. And neither of my lodges are any the wiser for it. It was a capital idea of mine, that it was. Now, let me put Mr. Bo Cox's things out of Mr. Box's way. And now to make the bed. And don't let me forget that what the head of the bed for Colonel Cox becomes the foot for the bed of Private Box. People states do differ so. The idea of Colonel Cox presume it in complain of such a bold to as this. Law, law, Mr. Box, what's the matter? Ah, mind your own business, man, sir. I must declare you're quite pale in the face, because what a temper you're in. What colour would you have a man to be who has been setting long leaders all night for a daily paper? But then you have all the day to yourself. So it seems, man, sir. Far be it from me to hurry your movements, man, sir. But I think it's right to acquaint you with my immediate intention of divesting myself of my garments and going to bed. Right away, sir. Oh, stop. Can you inform me who the individual is that I invariably encounter going downstairs when I'm coming up and coming upstairs when I'm going down? Why, well, um, the gentleman from the attic, sir. <laughs> there is nothing particularly remarkable about him except his hats. I meet him in all sorts of hats. <laughs> White hats and black hats. Hats with narrow brims and hats with broad brims. <laughs> in short, I've come to the conclusion that they must be individually and professionally associated with a hatting interest. Yes, sir. Oh, and by the by, Mr. Box, he has made me the request to beg you as a particular favor that you would not smoke quite so much. Did he? Well, then you may tell the gentle hatter, with my compliments, that if he objects to the fluvia of tobacco, he had better domesticate himself into some adjoining parish. You surely wouldn't deprive me of a lodger. Huh? That would come to precisely the same thing, Bouncer, for if I detect the slightest attempt to put out my pipe again, I at once give you warning that... that... that I shall give you warning at once. Do you want anything more of me? On the contrary, Bouncer, I've had quite enough of you. What? Well, if I ever. But next, I wonder. It's quite extraordinary, the trouble I always have to get rid of that venerable warrior. <laughs> now, let me see. 
Shall I take my nap before I swallow my breakfast? Or shall I take my breakfast before I swallow my nap? I mean, shall I swallow my nap before... No, never mind. I've got a rush of bacon somewhere. <laughs> Here it is. What a penny roll. <sighs> Next thing is to light the fire. <laughs> Where are my Lucifers? Upon my word, this is too bad about me, sir. I had a whole box full three days ago, and now there's only one. I'm perfectly aware that it prolongs my calls, my sugar, and my candles. But I did think that my Lucifers would be sacred. <laughs> I should like to ask any unprejudiced person or persons their opinion touching this candle. In the first place, a candle is an article that I don't require because I'm only here at daytime. I bought this candle on the 1st of May, chimney sweeper's day, calculating that it would last me three months. And now it's one week not half over, and the candle three parts gone. <sighs> Bouncers be using my gridiron. The last article of consumption that I cooked upon it was a pork chop, and now it is powerfully impregnated with the odor of red herrings. <sighs> How sleepy I am, to be sure. I'd indulge myself with a nap if uh, there was anybody here to superintend the turning of my bacon. <sighs> Perhaps it will turn itself.
Always in busyness, unpunctuality, even slight is in his eye. Such a crime without showing life is in his shop. I thought there'd be the devil to pay. Shop, I thought there'd be the devil to pay. <laughs> 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 Employer with his physiognomy, shining from soap like a star in astronomy, said, Mr. Cot, you'll oblige me, Donnie, if you will take this as your holiday, if you will take this as your holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Visions of bright in the back and fresher built cheap fair excursions already in the squash and feel fearing the rain put on my back and touch I bill. Now for my breakfast, my light day should nay. Now for my breakfast, my light day should nay. I bought a mutton chop. <laughs> Now, for the bread. Oh, goodness gracious me, I forgot the bread. Oh. Hello, what's this? A roll, I declare. Come, that's lucky. Now, to light the fire, yes. Who presumes to touch my box of lucifers? What? It's empty. I left one in it, I take my oath I did. Hey, Day, the fire is lighted. What's that on it? It's bacon. Bacon it is. Well, upon my life, there's a quiet coolness to balance his proceedings that's almost amusing. He takes my last Lucifer, my coals, and my gridiron to cook his breakfast by. No, 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 I can't stand this. Come off of that. I wonder how long I've been asleep. Good gracious, my bacon! Hello? What's this? A chop! Who's chop? Bouncers, I'll be bound. <laughs> he thought to cook his breakfast while I am asleep with my coals and my gridiron too. <laughs> but where is my bacon? <gasps> Upon my life, Bouncers going it! And shall I curb my indignation? Shall I falter in my vengeance? No. <laughs> what do you think you're doing up there? Sorry, sir. It was an accident. <laughs> so much for Bounce's breakfast. Now for my own. I shall as well. I will lay my breakfast things. <laughs> oh, 
goodness gracious, my chop! Oh. Hello, what's this? The beacon again? Oh, no sounds, but confounded, dash it, damn it, I can't stand this! Oh. That's the second time you've done that. You'll excuse me, sir, but that is not the second time I have done that. Oh, some people.
What do you mean by saying that's a plan, sir? I mean nothing, sir. Ah, so do I, sir. Very well, sir. Very well, sir. Oh, here we go. Immediately turn out that hat. Instantly remove that printer. Oh, the gentleman. Explain. Explain. Whose room is this? Yes, whose room is this? Doesn't it belong to me? No. Uh, you hear, sir? It belongs to me. No. Ha! It belongs to you both. To both, both of us? us? Yes, don't be angry, Chance. But you see, that gentleman only being at home during the daytime, and that gentleman only at night. I thought I might venture until my little back second floor room was ready. <laughs> when, when will your little back second floor room be ready? ready? Why, tomorrow. I'll take it. So will I. Excuse me, but if you both take it, you may as well stop where you are. True. I spoke first, sir. With all my heart, sir. The little back second floor room is yours. Now go! Go? Poo poo. <gasps> now, don't fight. Chance, I will see if I can get room ready this very day. Don't travel, Chance and officer, but keep your temper. You allow me to observe, sir, if you haven't had any exercise today, you'd better go out and take it. I shall do nothing of the sort, sir. Very well, sir. Very well, sir. However, don't let me prevent you from going out. Don't flatter yourself, sir. I know that's my ball, sir. Hello. What are you about, sir? What am I about? I'm about to smoke. <laughs> put down that window, sir. Then you put out your pipe, sir. There. <coughs> there. I shall retire to my pillow. Oh, you'll excuse me, sir, but I cannot allow anybody to rumble my bed. Your bed? Hark you, sir. Can you fight? Fight? No, sir. No? Then come on! Oh, sit down, sir, or I shall instantly vociferate police. Sit. I say, sir. Well, sir. Although we are doomed to occupy the same room for a few hours longer, I don't see any necessity for cutting each other's throats, sir. Uh, no, no, it is an operation I should decidedly object to. <laughs> After all, I've no violent animosity against you, sir. Oh, no, nor, nor have I any 
rooted antipathy toward you, sir. Besides, it was all bouncers' fault. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Very well, sir. Very well, sir. Hmm. <laughs> Take a bit of fruit, sir. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Sing, sir. Sing? I sometimes dabble in a serenade. Oh, then dabble away, sir. The buttercup dwells on the lowly mead, the daisy is bright to see. I can't each ball. And I play on the concertina. <laughs> the concertina. Fiddle, little dumb, 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 fiddle,
My very dear sir, if there does exist some ingenious contrivance whereby a man on the eve of committing matrimony may leave this world yet stop in it, I shouldn't be sorry to know it. <laughs> then I presume I'm not to set you down as being particularly and frantically attached to your intended. Well, not exactly. Yet at present, I'm only aware of one obstacle to my doting upon her. That is, well, I can't abide her. <laughs> then there is nothing more easy. Do as I did. I will. What is it? Drown yourself. How will you be quiet, sir? <laughs> Listen. Long ago it was my faith to captivate a widow at Ramsgate. I just ought to state the same at Margate did her. By her not liking to be kissed, I thought I'd better try to. In the lifeguards of Luke's and Link's. Oh, God, and so did I too. <laughs> I was not tall enough, they said. Too short, they said of me. The infant tried, I entered, and I the infantry. My widow offered to purchase my discharge from the marching line. Oh, that's odd. Coincidentally, the very same did mine. I hesitated to consent, for my consent she waited. I gave it. Oh, oh with mine I went, and never hesitated. <laughs> The happy day came near at length, we hoped it would be sunny. I found I needed all my strength to face the ceremony. I suddenly found out I was unworthy to possess. I told her so at once because I feared my distress. Before the words went out of my mouth, that came from the north and flew to the south as something that came unpleasantly near. Clattering, spattering, battering, shattering, flashing, dashing, flashing, smashing, smashing, crashing, missing but wasting the pass of my ear. Oh. It shattered itself on the mantelpiece. Oh, what was it? Oh, the basin called slop. <laughs> it fell at my foot, it would have put the back of a man who was ever so meek. So being thus baited, I retaliated and hold out my widow a crockery teacup. <laughs> Between you then there was a fraction. <laughs> I was threatened with an action. <laughs> Proceed. One morn, when I had finished my ablution, I took oh, no sir a resolution. Oh, 
way was choked then away in the opposite way I was what a clever man what a capital plan I've listened with attention I think that I should like to try your wonderful invention what a clever man what a capital plan you I've listened with attention if you like that I should like to <laughs> oh dear me, I begin to have some slight perception of your meaning, ingenious <laughs> creature. You disappeared, and the suit of clothes is found. Exactly, and in the pocket of the coat, or the waistcoat, or the pantaloons, I forget. Oh, never mind. There was found a piece of paper with these affecting farewell words. Oh. This is thy work, O oh, Penelope Anne. Penelope Anne? Pen Penelope Anne? Penelope Anne. Originally widow of William Wiggins. Widow of William Wiggins. Proprietor of bathing sheets. Proprietor of bathing sheets. And Margate. And Ramsgate. Oh. Then it is she. And you, sir. Ha <laughs> ha you, you sir, are oh, Box, the lamented long lost Box. I am. <laughs> and to think I was about to marry the interesting creature you so cruelly deceived. <laughs> oh, then you are Cox. Yes, I am. I've heard of it. I congratulate you. I give you job. And uh, now I will go and show oh, No, 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 you don't. I shall not lose sight of you till I've restored you to the arms of your intended. My intended? You mean your intended? No, sir. Yours. How can she be mine now that I'm drunk? No, but you're no such thing, sir. And I prefer presenting you to Penelope Anne. I've no wish to be introduced to your intended. <laughs> My intended, sir? Uh, your intended? You proposed to her first. Yes, but then I came to an untimely end, and you popped the question off. Oh, very well, sir. <laughs> very well, sir. But you, sir, yes, yes, you, sir, are much more worthy of her than I am. Permit me then to follow the generous impulse of my nature. I give her up to benevolent bee. I wouldn't rob you for the world. Now, good morning, sir. Stop well, hand me, Hatter, or I shall cast the cast of the lamb and assume the lion. Okay. <gasps> An insult to my very face and to my very nose. You know the consequences, sir. Instant satisfaction. With all my heart, sir. Bouncer! 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 Yes, sir. Well, stop. You don't mean to say that you keep loaded firearms in the house. No, sir. They're not loaded. 
and fetch the murderous weapons instantly. What is your opinion of dueling, sir? Uh, I, I think, think it's a barbarous, barbarous practice, sir. Oh, so do I, sir. And to be sure, I do not so much object to it when the pistols are not loaded. Oh, no, that does make a difference, yes, yes. yes. On the other hand, doesn't it strike you as rather a waste of time for two people to keep firing pistols at each other with nothing in them? Oh, no, no. Uh, not any more than any other harmless recreation. <laughs> Marty, sir, uh, why do you object to Mary Penelope Ann? Because, as I've already observed, I can't abide her. You, you at least, you'll be happy with her. Happy? Me? With the consciousness that I have deprived you of such a treasure? No, Cox, no. Oh, don't think of me, Box. I shall be sufficiently rewarded by the knowledge of my boxes. I mean, this don't be absurd. And don't you be ridiculous. I won't have it. No more will I. I have it. Oh. Suppose we draw lots on the lady. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yes. <laughs> or what say you to dice? Dice. Very well, sir. Dice by all means. <laughs> that is rather lucky. Nef Vance's nephew has left a pair yesterday. He sometimes persuades me to throw for a trifle, and as he always throws sixes, I suspect our good ones. I have no objection at all to dice. I lost one pound, seventeen sixpence last barnet races, so a very gentlemanly looking man with a peculiar knack of throwing sixes. I suspect they were loaded, so I gave him another half crown, oh, and he gave me the dice. <laughs> Now then, sir. <laughs> Ready, sir. <laughs> Will you lead off, sir? As you please, sir. The lowest throw, of course, wins Penelope Ann. Oh, of course, sir. Very well, sir. Very well, sir. Sixties. That's a good throw for you. Sixties. Hard one, two, sixes, 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 sixes. <laughs> Very good dice. Yours, sir, are nice. Suppose we arrange if it suits you to change. Oh, very well, that I will do to please a gentleman such as you. Very well, sir. Heads 
I win, tails you lose. Yes. No, sir. <laughs> Heads win, <weak>, sir. <laughs> Very well, sir. Go on, sir. Hello, it's got no tail. I've a man to beat you out on the nets. Oh, your shilling, I find, has got two heads. You, you swindler, you cheat, take care of my feet. Out of my room, turn it into the street. Turn me a try it, that is if you can. It's a joke, take my street, the cheat. You swindler, cheat, fuck it. Second floor room. Here's your little second floor room, lady. Not quite yet, sir. I can't find your pistols. But I brought you a letter. It came by the general post yesterday. I don't know how I came to forget it, for I put it carefully in my pocket. And you've kept it carefully in your pocket ever since. Yes, sir. I hope you will forgive me. Oh, by the way, I paid tuppence for it. Oh, did you? Then I do forgive you. Oh, Margate. <laughs> Doubtless a tender epistle from Penelope. Oh. Ah, <clears throat> yeah, then, sir, you read it. Me, sir? Uh, I'm not about to read a letter from your intended. My intended? Pooh! It's addressed to you, Cox, C O X. Oh, do you think that's a C? It looks to me rather like a B. Nonsense, fractured seal. <sighs> Goodness gracious. Gracious goodness. Amargate, May the 4th. Sir, I hasten to convey to you the intelligence of a melancholy accident which has bereft you of your intended wife. <gasps> he means your intended. Uh, no, yours. However, your... it's, it's perfectly material, but she unquestionably was yours. How can that be when you propose to her first? But then you... Now, don't let this begin again. Uh... Go on. But, uh, poor Mrs. Wiggins went out for a short excursion in a sailing boat. A sudden and violent squall soon after took place, which it is supposed upset her, as she was found two days afterwards keel upwards. Poor woman. The boat, sir. <laughs> oh, that uh, makes sense. <laughs> As her man of business, I immediately proceeded to examine her papers, amongst which I soon discovered a will, and the following extract from which will, I have no doubt, be satisfactory to you. I hereby bequeath my entire property to my intended husband. Oh, excellent. What unhappy creature. Benevolent all being gone too soon. Oh, don't you think that I tossed up for such a woman? When I remembered that I staked such a treasure upon the hazard of dying. Oh, Mons, Mons, I'm sure I cannot make you enough for your sympathy. Oh, I'm sure, Cox, you couldn't feel more if she had been your own intended. If, sir, if, sir, if she had been my own intended, she was my own intended. For my life, that. 
didn't you very properly observe just now that I propose to her first? Uh, to which you very sensibly replied that you'd come to an untimely end. I denied. I say you have. The fortune is mine. Uh, mine, sir. I'll have it. I'll have it. I got it all. So will I. Stop. A thought strikes me. Oh. Instead of going to law for the property, suppose we divide it. Equally. Equally, I'll take two thirds. Oh, very well. I'll take three fourths. <laughs> that won't do, sir. Half an hour? Very well, sir. There's my hand upon it. <laughs> and mine. <laughs> Hello, what's that? Postman again? Postman yesterday, postman today. Oh. I mean, I mean, not that's that's a plan. What is it? Another letter, oh, of course. That one's more. I have to give you again. <laughs> no. Oh, another trifle for market. <gasps> goodness gracious! Gracious goodness! Uh, sir, I happen to inform you the false alarm sends all but to set Mrs. Wiggins, your intended to pick the by a steamer, and carried into Brunei, will return to you this morning, and will start by early train tomorrow, and to be with you at ten o'clock exact. <gasps> Cox, I congratulate you. Oh, Cox, I give you joy. I am so sorry that the most important business in the colonial office will prevent my witnessing the truly Happy meeting of you and your intended. Good morning, sir. Uh, it is obviously for me to retire, sir, and not for worlds will I disrupt the rapturous meeting between you and your intended. I think Good morning, sir. The last arrangement was that it was your intended. No, sir, yours. 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 What's that? <gasps> A cat's thrown up at the door. A woman's got out. Speaking a majestic person, it's Valeria. Your intended. Your, your sir. <laughs> She's coming upstairs. Quick, hide. Come on. I just stepped out. Do I buy? It's only me, Sergeant Bouncer. Only you? Where's the lady? Gone. Gone? Upon your honor. As a militia man? Yes. And she's left a note for Wiggity Cox. Oh, oh, hey, then give it to me. <laughs> by the by, I paid tokens for it. No, you didn't. <laughs> then I will leave it on the table, Captain. Do not receive for I hasten to apprise you by immediate Wait, genius. Mr. Knox! Oh, hurrah! <laughs> Great cheers for Knox! Oh, that's what your heart does. A little back second floor room's quite ready, sir. I don't want it. No more do I. Uh, what your heart does. What your terrorism is under. Oh, Box. Cox. You will pardon the insanity of the remarks, sir. But the more I gaze on your features, the more I'm convinced that you are my long-lost brother. <gasps> the very observation I was going to make to you myself. Oh, tell me, sir, in mercy, tell me. Have you such a thing as a strawberry mark on your left arm, sir? The other left, sir. <laughs> no. Then it is he. Oh, of course we stop where we are. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, you know, between you and I, I'm growing rather partial to this place. So am I. And I begin to feel quite at home here. Yes, it is quite clean and comfortable. Oh, and from what I've seen, the master of it is very anxious to please. Ah, uh, so he is, sir. Uh, and I vote that we stick by him. Agreed. There's my hand upon it, joined but yours. Agree the house is big enough for both of us. Then Cox and Box are satisfied. <laughs> My hand upon it, joint but yours, I agree the house will hold us. And two good lodgers bounce again till in his arms in fold us. Oh yes, <laughs> yes, to us.
arms and walls and lawns. You remember, of course, <laughs> you remember, of course, <laughs> when I mounted a horse in Her Majesty's force as one of the young men to cope with the foe and for then an invasion to enter the nation. And there's no occasion to see. Let's go, 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 let's go